Very good evening and welcome to our evening prayer on this feast day of Leo the Great, who is Bishop of Rome and teacher of the faith. And so some words about Leo himself. He was, became Pope in the year 440 and twice proved his bravery in saving the citizens of Rome from the invading barbarians. He was an eloquent and wise preacher, using simple gospel text to proclaim the Christian faith. His admitted administrative skills were unrivaled, and he used the resources of the church for the good of the people. Rather than further confuse Christians by entering into the controversy over the person of Christ, Leo spoke simply of the humility of Christ, who was divine and human in his compassion, uniting biblical images in prayer rather than dividing in debate. And Leo died on this day in the year 460. And so our evening prayer begins, O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. Your faithful servants bless you, they make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. Now as darkness is falling away, wash away our transgressions, cleanse us by your refining fire, and make us temples of your Holy Spirit. By the light of Christ, dispel the darkness of our hearts, and make us ready to enter your kingdom, where songs of praise for ever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. And the hymn for this evening, Firmly, I Believe and Truly, the John Newman hymn. Firmly, I believe and truly, God is three and God is one. And I next acknowledge duly manhood taken by the Son. And I hope and trust most fully in that manhood crucified, and each thought and deed unruly do to death as he has died. Simply to his grace and holy light and life and strength belong, and I love supremely, solely him the holy, him the strong. And I hold in veneration for the love of him alone. Holy Church as his creation and her teachings as his own. Adoration may be given with and through the angelic host to the God of earth and heaven, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. And Psalm 37. Fret not because of the evildoers, do not be jealous of those who do wrong, for they shall soon wither like grass and like the herb fade away. Trust in the Lord and be doing good, dwell in the land and be nourished in truth. Let your delight be in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait for him. Do not fret over those that prosper as they follow their evil schemes. Refrain from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret lest you be moved to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. You will search for their place and find them gone. But the lowly shall possess the land and shall delight in abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord shall laugh at the wicked, for he sees that their day is coming. 
The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow and strike down the poor and needy to slaughter those who walk in truth. Their sword shall go through their own heart and their bows shall be broken. The little that the righteous have is better than great riches of the wicked, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the godly and their inheritance shall stand for ever. They shall not be put to shame in that perilous time, and in days of famine they shall have enough. But the wicked shall perish like the enemy, like the glory of the meadows. The enemies of the Lord shall vanish. They shall vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous are generous in giving. For those who are blessed by God shall possess the land, and those who are cursed by him shall be rooted out. When your steps are guided by the Lord and you delight in his way, though you stumble, you shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds you fast by the hand. I have been young and am now old, yet never have I seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. All day long they are generous in lending, and their children shall also be blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and you shall abide for ever. For the Lord loves the thing that is right and will not forsake his faithful ones. The unjust shall be destroyed for ever. The offspring of the wicked shall be rooted out. The righteous shall possess the land and dwell in it for ever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom and their tongue speaks the thing that is right. The law of their God is in their heart and their footsteps shall not slide. The wicked spy on the righteous and seek occasion to slay them. The Lord will not leave them in their hand, nor let them be condemned when they are judged. Wait upon the Lord and keep his way, and he will raise you up to possess the land. And when the wicked are uprooted, you shall see it. I myself have seen the wicked in great power and flourishing like a tree in full leaf. I went by, and lo, they were gone. I sought them, but they could nowhere be found. Keep innocence and keep the thing that Heed the thing that is right, for that will bring you peace at the last. But the sinners shall perish together, and the posterity of the wicked shall be rooted out. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord, and he is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord shall stand by them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and shall save them, because they have put their trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In the book of Daniel, chapter 5, beginning at verse 13. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king said to Daniel, So you are Daniel, one of the exiles of Judah, whom my father, the king, brought from Judah. I have heard that the spirit of the gods is in you, and that enlightenment, understanding, and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the enchanters, have been brought in before me to read this writing and tell me its interpretation, but they are not able to give the interpretation of the matter. But I have heard that you can give interpretations and solve problems. Now if you are willing to read the writing and tell me its interpretation, you shall be clothed in purple, have a chain of gold around your neck, and rank third in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered in the presence of the king, let your gifts be for yourself and keep your rewards for someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing to the king and let him know the interpretation. O king, the most high God gave your father Nebuchadnezzar kingship, greatness, glory and majesty. And because of the greatness that he gave them, all peoples, nations and languages trembled and feared before him. He killed those who he wanted to kill, kept alive those he wanted to keep alive, honoured those he wanted to honour, and degraded those he wanted to degrade. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened so that he acted proudly, he was deposed from his kingly throne and his glory was stripped from him. He was driven from human society and his mind was made like that of an animal. His dwelling was with the wild asses. He was fed grass like oxen, and Belshaz and his body bathed with the dew of heaven until he learned that the Most High God has sovereignty over the kingdom of mortals and sets it, 
sets over it whoever he will. And you, Belshazzar, his son, have not humbled your heart, even though you knew all this. You have exalted yourself against the king of heaven. The vessels of his temple have been brought in before you, and you and your lords, your wives and your concubines have been drinking from them. You have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know, but the God in whose power is your very breath, and to whom belong all your ways, you have not honoured. So from his presence, the hand was sent and the writing was described, and this is the writing that was described, Mene, Mene, Tekel, and Parsin. This is the interpretation of the matter, Mene. God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and find wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command, and Daniel was clothed in purple. A chain of gold was put around his neck, and a proclamation was made concerning that he should rank third in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, the Chaldean king, was killed, and Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. Here ends the first reading. And the Song of God's Assembled. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. We have come before God's holy mountain to the holy, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. We have come before countless angels making festival, before the assembly of the firstborn citizens of heaven. We have come before God who is judge of all, before the spirits of the just made perfect. We have come before Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So let us give thanks and offer to God acceptable worship, full of reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. And reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 7. After this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind could blow on earth or sea or against any tree. I saw another, another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God, and he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to damage earth and sea, saying, Do not damage the earth or the sea or the trees until we have marked the servants of our God with a seal on their foreheads. And again I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed out of every tribe of the people of Israel. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the living creatures, in the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and honour and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. And he said to me, these are those who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends the second reading. And our responsory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, 
and afterwards receive me with glory. And the Magnificat. Those who keep and teach the commandment shall be considered great in heaven. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation he has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Those who keep and teach the commandments will be considered great in heaven. And so we come to our prayers of intercession, praying today for the Diocese of the Highveld in the Anglican Church of South, Southern Africa, a link diocese of the Monmouth Diocese here in the Church in Wales. We pray for the Abba Conwy mission area, especially today for the community of St. Kestenin in Llangestenin, for, Rich, for Nick Davis, their warden, Sue Storey, their priest in charge, and we pray for Sue and their congregation as they begin this new chapter together. We pray as always for Gregory, our bishop, for Andy, the Archdeacon of St. Asaph, for the Abba Conwy mission area this week, and we pray also for the Venerable John Lomas as he prepares to take up the responsibility of the See of Swansea and Brecon. We remember too all those who have asked us to pray for them, for those involved in the vaccine programme, for all those in nursing and residential homes and in prison. We pray too for the sick amongst them, Louise, Derek, Gordon, Harry, Dot, Peter, Joshua, Bob, Alison, Paul, Barbara, Les, Beryl, Maldwin, Roy, Mark, Vernon, Peggy, Doreen, Carol, Nadine, baby Cephas Jones, Anne and Ken. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us make our prayer in the power of the Spirit, looking to Jesus, the pioneer of our faith that with the noble fellowship of the prophets we may discern the signs of the, the kingdom in our midst. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that with the glorious company of the apostles we may proclaim your gospel throughout the world. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that with the white-robed army of martyrs we may be ready to suffer for the truth's sake. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that with all who are anointed by your Spirit, we may bring good news to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that with the saints in light, we may bind up the brokenhearted and comfort all who mourn. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that within the whole company of Christ's pilgrim people, we may come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. In communion with all the saints, let us commend the world to the mercy and protection of God. God our Father, who made your servant Leo strong in the defence of the faith, fill your church with the spirit of truth that, guided by humility and governed by love, she may prevail against the powers of evil. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me once again on this feast day of St. Leo the Great. I wish you a very good evening indeed. Thank you.